Ronaldinho, football's greatest entertainer. In an era where so many people are obsessed with watching football via stats and Excel spreadsheets, I'm here to remind you about a player who made an entire generation fall in love with football. Whether you know him for scoring the best home debut goal we've ever seen, for that record-breaking YouTube video that only he could have us believing was real for so many years, or just the iconic smile and goal celebrations after his magical performances, Ronaldinho had the streets and he had your old man as well. There were things this guy could do with his feet that the best players in the world nowadays would tear their ACL just even thinking about. The fact he was the cover star for FIFA Street says it all. Gaucho was the face of the sport for years and was your favourite player's favourite player. This guy transcended the sport to the point where even the world's biggest rappers were bringing him out on stage despite him not speaking a word of English. If aliens pulled up to earth tomorrow and asked me to show them footage of four players to get them into football, Dino would be in my Mount Rushmore without doubt. In order for us to understand how this long-haired wizard became one of the most recognisable faces in the world, we have to go right back to the beginning. So grab your popcorn, it's time for a proper football lesson. Ronaldinho, or Ronaldo de Assis Moreira as he was known back then, was born in March 1980. His family led a relatively humble life in Porto Alegre, Brazil, and it wasn't until his older brother Roberto joined Gremio that they were able to move to a more affluent and safer area. Unfortunately, his father passed when he was just 8 years old, and little Gaucho wanted nothing more than to become like his older brother. He joined in all the youth club matches on the beach and in the cages, and was quickly given the Inho at the end of his name to show just how good this small kid was. Even in futsal games, it was clear that this dude was just a level above the rest. The Brazilian media began to take notice when this freak scored all 23 goals in a 23-0 win before showing his talents on an even bigger stage at the 1997 Under-17 World Cup with an assist in the final against my country Ghana. Gremio gave him the platform to keep cooking after his 1998 Copa Libertadores debut with his 22 goals the following year elevating him to potential generational levels. He was already a big game player and he loved the derby against Internacional. If guys weren't familiar with his game by now, him leaving 1994 World Cup winning captain Dunga folded like an ironing board on multiple occasion should be enough. After his 58 goals in 125 games led him to a Copa Sul and Campeonato Gaucho trophy double in 1999, his phone was now on blast from European powerhouses desperate to sign him, especially after he joined up with Brazil's main squad to win the Copa America that same year. Arsenal tried but they failed to get him a work permit and somehow St Mirren missed out after a fake passport scandal ended their hopes. Either way, the Gremio Ultras had accepted that their superstar was on his way out. Ronaldinho joined PSG in 2001 in a 5 million euros deal and after a relatively slow start to life in Europe where he struggled to fill the void left by Laurent Robert, Okocha the magician took him under his wing like a young apprentice and suddenly Dino was cooking. Once Anelka had dipped on loan to Liverpool, the goals started flowing, his hair started growing and so was his reputation. Players would be diving in left, right and centre to stop this guy in his tracks but his magnetic ball control made it look like he had Android 18's force field around him to prevent anyone getting anywhere near. He picked up the Inter Toto Cup in 2001 and it looked like his choice to go to a relatively smaller team in PSG to try get into the O2 World Cup squad had paid dividends. He went on to form a deadly trio with R9 and Rivaldo at the tournament where they'd end up winning the entire World Cup after his iconic goal against England along the way. Again, he is the only player that can dare say he meant that. The only issue seemed to be with PSG coach Luis Fernandez, who felt he was more worried about the Paris nightlife than the football. Regardless, he took that number 10 shot the following season and the fans were giving him standing ovation for his outrageous performances, embarrassing both defenders and goalkeepers was alike, even winning the Goal of the Season award for 2003. But this personal accolade wasn't enough to satisfy him, and with PSG failing to qualify for Europe, he expressed his desire to leave. With Real Madrid entering the Galacticos era, Barcelona's Laporta needed to fight back, promising that they would sign either Beckham, Henri or Ronaldinho. United fought valiantly to persuade Ronaldinho to join them, but the Manchester nightlife clearly didn't move Ronaldinho and he signed for Barca. Unlike the PSG move, this is one that hit the ground running like a 100m sprinter. To pick the ball up in your own half, dribble past brothers like they're cones and then lash it in off the bar from 35 yards is an astonishing way to announce yourself to your new home fans. His momentum was sadly halted by an injury that saw Barca slip to 12 in the league during his absence. But upon his return, he catapulted them back up to second with his 15 league goals. He even got the assist for Xavi that saw them win at the Bernabeu for the first time in 7 years. It was a sign of things to come as they'd win the league title the following year and Ronaldinho was now collecting iconic moments in the Champions League that had his own teammates saying they'd got their joy back. Going into the 2005-06 season, Dino was stacking up FIFA World Player of the Year awards and was eventually given the much coveted Ballon d'Or award. Against historic rivals Real Madrid, his greatness reached new heights as he was given a standing ovation by the Bernabeu after his brace. Deep it, this is the same fan base who boosted their greatest ever player Cristiano Ronaldo for missing a couple chances in a game until he says sorry. It was undeniable now that he was the best player on the planet. Chelsea had deja vu as Dino dunked on them again and this time he managed to take them all the way, helping Barcelona to their 
first Champions League trophy of the millennium to go alongside back-to-back -back league titles. This 26 goal season playing as a winger is crazy when you realise that his main role was to supply Samuel Eto'o. The 06 World Cup was a disappointment for Brazil as a whole as France knocked them out the quarters. But the next season, Dino was back firing and added that Villarreal bicycle to his incredible catalogue of goals. He had his best scoring season with 21 league goals but Barca finished second only on head-to-head. -head. Injuries and his obvious party lifestyle began to take their toll but before his body fully gave up, he made sure that after taking Messi under his wing, he was now able to fully pass the baton on before an emotional departure from the club that he'd scored 94 times for. No matter his physical condition, Ronaldinho being available would have everyone on red alert. City tried their hardest to make him their poster boy after their recent takeover, but in the end he opted to join Milan, where he had the adulation of the fans pretty quickly after scoring in a 1-0 win over their great rivals Inter. His magic was there for all to see, but his fluctuating weight made it difficult for him to show it consistently. He still bagged the respectable 10 goals for Milan playing in the 10, and when Ancelotti left in the summer, he was shifting back out wide in a 4-3-3 under Leonardo. Now he was picking up braces and even scoring a hat-trick to remind guys that form is temporary, class is permanent. That year he'd finished as the top assistant in the entire Serie A and as always Ronaldinho's performances were more than just the numbers. Trophies were obviously a massive motivator for Dino but fans leaving stadiums with smiles on their faces ranked very high in his list of priorities too. With that number 80 on his back for his year of birth, he was still cooking defenders in a league that was known for years as the most defensive in Europe. And yet, despite his desperation to make it, he wasn't picked for that 2010 World Cup squad. The 2010-11 season started off with him racking up assist after assist now playing alongside Zlatan and Robinho as Milan went on to win the league but he wasn't actually there to pick up his medal after being involved in yet another transfer saga that January. Believe it or not, Blackburn with the Venkies were genuinely in the running alongside LA Galaxy and plenty of clubs back home. But Flamengo won that race for his signature after agreeing to have a nightclub clause in his contract that allowed him to go out and do a Mazda two times a week with no repercussions. This brother clearly cared more about being on vibes and making money. You can tell by the cities that he chose to live in in his career. Even now, in his 30 store, he was still able to put on a show for the tens of thousands of people that came to watch him. He delivered Flamengo the Campeonato Carioca in 2011 after adding more free kicks to his ever-growing collection from set pieces. One of his most legendary games that would sound like fiction if there wasn't footage available was the day that they were down 3-0 to Neymar Santos before Ronaldinho little broed him with a hat-trick on the way to a 5-4 win. He then made the switch to Atletico Mineiro four days after cancelling his contract with Flamengo after much disagreement. Surprise, surprise, he picked up a Copa Libertadores and Campeonato Mineiro double in 2013 as well as being voted South American Player of the Year too. Like a magician at the end of his show, he left right after winning them the 2014 Recopa Sudamericana. Ronaldinho's world tour for vibes now had him picking between India and Basingstoke Town in the English Conference, but he opted for a two-year deal with Mexican side Queretaro in 2014. The free kicks were still flying in the same way they did 10 years earlier, and he relieved that same standing ovation feeling he had a decade earlier too, after his performance away at title holders Club America at the Estadio Azteca. Despite not winning any silverware, he built a wonderful connection with the fans, before leaving at the age of 35 for one last hurrah with Fluminense. After just nine appearances, he himself realised that his body just wasn't up for it anymore and he didn't want to cheat the fans, so he terminated his own deal to finally bring the curtains down on a legendary career for both club and country. So many players fell in love with the sport just because of him alone, no matter what team they ended up supporting. He could rock them same baggy clothes for 20 years and get away with it. I mean, this guy even went to prison for that fake passport scandal and still, we don't care because he's Ronaldinho. He wasn't there to be a robotic efficiency machine like some forwards today. I'm sure you all knew who he was already, but if you learned something new today, leave a like on the video, comment if he gets into an all-time best players 11, and subscribe for new lessons every Monday. Class dismissed. Bosch.